What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Solomon Circus Live. Those they are actually at a regional. So shout out to the boys. We have Thomas on the left playing Kashtira, the anti-fire deck. And then on the right, we also have Brian playing Kashtira. You know, these are going to be the decks that are going to be the most powerful decks of the format after the fire. We are going to be seeing Kashtira on the right going first, but the blue mat, before we dive into the like comes trap, we are going to be seeing they activate a copy of Pressure Planet, searching for a copy of Fenrir. And so a lot of the times, you know, we have those cards like Shifter in the deck right now that just do absolutely nothing against your opponent. Um, but they do have some hand traps that are quite good. We're going to be seeing them summon out the copy of Fenrir. They're going to hit them with a copy of Mourner. We're going to talent rip the hand. And we see a Scareclaw Cash Gia, Desires, Mourner, and then a Scareclaw Cash, Fenrir, and a Mourner. Okay. So having double Mourner here can be quite impactful. Uh, they're going to go Birth. We can then normal summon out the Unicorn, and we can activate the effect, letting us search for a copy of the Theosis. Theosis can actually let us summon out any copy of the card we want. Remember, we could go for a copy of Shang, which you most likely are going to be seeing here. We're going for a Draco Sack. Draco Sack can then activate its effects, and we know they have the Mourner in the hand. I don't believe it can be activated twice per turn, so we're going to see them summon out the two tokens. We're going to link away one of the tokens for a copy of Link Spider, link away the second token for another copy of Link Spider here. Then we can go into the copy of the Golem thing, and then we are going to be able to activate the effect, summon it back out. Then we can go for a copy of Heat Soul. At this point, we're just trying to gain... Uh, Gain advantage on our opponent here with those additional cards. And we're going to go Birth, be able to bring back the Fenrir here. And that's just going to be... I guess Fenrir is going to be able to search for a copy of the Rise Heart. Rise Heart can also push someone himself out if we wanted to. We are going to be someone with the Rise. And then we are going to banish a copy of the Unicorn. And banishing the top three from our opponent's deck. Maybe hitting something really good here. You know, if we hit a copy of, like... Or really any of the, uh, any names is probably the best. But we are going to go for a copy of Shangira. And we could see potentially even a F F0 if they did play it. I don't think they would go for Shang in this case. We do see the Theosis. Summoning out the Unicorn there. They're gonna see a set one and just pass on this. Then we're gonna go stand or draw phase. We're gonna activate the heat soul, pay a thousand to draw. Then we're gonna go standby phase. Shang summon a copy of the Fenrir, and we are big chilling. We have Fenrir as well as Unicorn on the table alongside the Shang pop when we ever want to banish a card. We have a heat soul for that additional draws, and we also have birth to just get us continuous resource looping. We are already seeing the Mourner gonna be hitting the copy of the Fenrir there, and then we're going to activate the copy of Terraforming. Now everything is known. And that's there just for the copy of Rathos. So now we have Scareclaw doing nothing, and then we have the Fenrir alongside the copy of the, uh, the planet here. Just dealing with a copy of the Unicorn. So we're going to put something with the Fenrir at first. This is going to try to let us get that, uh, get that really copy of something. If they have like Ash, for example, for this, then they'll be able to activate the Fenrir. Fenrir can banish that copy of the Unicorn, and then we can not uh, get our extra deck rip. But we're going to be seeing them search for a copy of Ryzart here. This is like a very skillful mirror, by the way. If you guys ever played the deck. Um, you know how kind of like miserable this is. We're then going to be unicorning, or we're going to act with the Fenrir effect, going to get hit with a copy of Imperm, and then we go unicorn, and then we're going to be able to destroy the extra deck. Then we're going to go Shang to lock a zone, and that's going to also allow us to then pressure planet pop the Fenrir, and we are going to be seeing, unfortunately, that, you know, that Scareclaw cast here in the hand is, quite the, is kind of the problem. Scare Clock Cash can be summoning out the copy of Fenrir. Like, it is skillful, but if both players are on the same playing field, and unfortunately the player on the left just does not have enough, like, you know, going to be able to just get those continuous draws with the decode, drawing the cards like Imperm and, like, Ash. Like, they did have the two Mourners, but it just was not enough, especially with the talents in the hand, which is, like, 
why it's so impactful. We're going to see Rise banishing the birth. And we then get the banish face down. We do have level 7s now on the field. The question is, is what really gets us the most like do we have a zeus line or do we even play zeus i guess is a question we're going to see them go for the copy of the dad or going for the drago sack here i should say then we're going to link away into link spider we're going to link away into our own link spider here do we have anything to stop this we're going to go for the golem go into link spider and this is going to go into a copy of heat soul or they could potentially even play access code we're going to see them go for the Heat Soul. And then Heat Soul is going to pay 1,000 to draw. We're starting to get those draws as well now. Um, not the best. Looks like they drew into a Desire. That's crazy here. I was like, what are they, like, not happy with drawing? Maybe it's a shifter. But, yeah, Desire is just being absolutely insane. They're going to see the Birth, Birth Banish. We're going to lock an additional zone here. And we're going to see the Draco Sack plus Decode going to an Axis Code. I feel like if we didn't, that's why we banished those cards from the graveyard, by the way, if you guys didn't know. Um, you want to banish it so that you can like kind of stop those copies of, uh, of a recursion. I mean, obviously, they don't have cash monsters in the graveyard, so it's not really important. They, the one the scare claw cash is gone. Um, so they could have banished it face down, but if they, they really wanted to stop like the access code lines, putting numerous materials in the grave. You know, if they do that, they're kind of left on essentially just the fire that is the heat soul. And then, of course, if they want to use the on-field effect using itself as a dark, it, that's fine. But like stopping having two pops and then have three pops and chances are they don't want to get rid of their access code is quite problematic. So. Our heat soul on the right, the blue heat soul, uh, is is boosted up by by a thousand right now, and the opponent's heat soul is boosted up also by a thousand. So they could crash, but they're going to go and destroy us to Fenrir and the unicorn there. So we kind of have the advantage because of the fact that we have all our cash monsters in rotation, and really the player on the left does just does not. Looks like they're looking at Appalooza lines as well here. They could go for the. Access code and access code popping the decode and then potentially popping like the copy of uh, of birth as well. But they have Shang on the field and Shang is just going to be able to continue to play regardless. Um, so it's going to scoop it up there, realizing the game is going to be lost even if they go for a two mat Appalooza. You know, Appalooza is going to obviously negate that Shangira um, and then Shangira. I think that the I'm pretty sure that the effect of race off only just says if a card's activated, it doesn't actually have to resolve. So they could just activate it and then pop the Appalooza on the field. Therefore, just going to be like a one mat Appalooza that just stops the copy of uh, that stops the Shang. And the Shang does nothing because we really have birth. And then birth search for a copy of Fen or birth summons out the Fenrir from the graveyard. Fenrir searches, and that's just going to be just game there. So definitely just a losing position for us, which is just unfortunate that Imperm really set off. Which was crazy is like that whole board was really good, of course. As you guys know, we were picking it down slowly, but that Imperm just absolutely just destroyed us. Uh, you know, making us not able to search for that additional card. I don't think that would have really definitely like changed the end game of the of the results here, but I definitely would have like changed a lot. Um, I don't know what the cards they were drawing off the decode. Like, you know, we saw a double decode draw. And then on the left side, we saw a decode into a copy of double decode here, uh, banishing 10 from the deck. But what's really cool when you're playing a cash mirror is that you can actually freely take out your copy of Shifter. Um, and that, that's such a nice feeling. Like, it, the deck, when you take out Shifter from the deck, the deck just becomes so much more fun to play with and against. Um, you know, there's actually lines where you are playing like some fun matchups. Uh, so we are going to be activating the copy of Terraforming. We see an Ash Blossom hit down, and this could be very bad if we had a copy of like the. Uh... Okay, we just have lots of hand taps. So we have a copy of the Pressured Planet, but we don't. 
We're going to be seeing the Fenrir summon. We're going to get Mourner. Then we activate Desires here, and we can't Ash it, and we're looking at our extras, or we're looking at what we banished, and we draw two, and we see a Nibiru here. We're going to activate the Birth. Birth can be able to let us normal summon up the copy of the Unicorn. The Unicorn can let us search. The Unicorn almost looks like it's from the OCG, being like a pseudo Starlight, but it's actually just a... Uh, it's actually just a um, a Prismatic Secret Rare, which actually looks quite nice. It looks like they activated Theosis, but they can't actually make anything because of the fact that they're 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 all banished. So we're gonna see them speed through their you know their lines here, and then we're gonna go for this. And this is like really where the lines can change. Do you want to go for a copy of the Deco, or do you want to go for a copy of a uh, a copy of the Appaloosa here? But they're going for the decode, and that's going to let us draw an additional card. We also have the birth being back out the Fenrir, but we have the bell for it, which is absolutely crazy. Then we're going to be seeing the decode, and we've burned through three hand traps now. We are going to talents rip their hand. They have a strike here, and they terraforming, leaving them just on a strike. What will the top deck be? I think this game's already decided. For anyone wondering why they have strike in their deck, is there's not that many cards you can side in. If you're going second, having a strike is not always the bad. And I think we drew into a copy of Theosis, and that's just going to be game two in the bag. Triple hand trap, done. Still making a board with a triple hand trap as well, which is pretty cool. You know, they were all low impact hand traps. Um, I think that Ash is probably one of the best hand traps there. Uh, Mourner was quite good as well, but. You know, we had desires. Desires just draw two cards. Pot of greed from your deck. Um, and, you know, we did see them get punished by banishing those spell cards. So if we would have been able to, like, kind of make a actual board, if we didn't have the bell or we didn't have uh, really anything else, I guess, if we would have had, like, Fenrir plus instead of Strike, I suppose, it would have been actually able to play. And, like, that would have been a. Very interesting game. Like when the resources game are so low and we have no spells, we have no theosis, we have no births in deck. It's like, well, what do you do? Or if we had like a nib, even nib would have been like just turn ending there. But going on to game three, we are going to be seeing Cash Dira on the right side, going to be able to choose going to go first or second. And there is arguably that you could make your opponent go first. You know, we saw with us in back in Cash Dira format when Cash Dira was the best deck. Cash Dira going second, which is absolutely insane, which we do see here. You know, Talents being a card that's just absolutely destructive. Um, so they're going to go Fenrir. Fenrir going to hit with a copy of Imperm, set one pass. And this is what I mean. We could just take a card with like this. If we have a Talents or anything like that, the game is essentially... Oh no, they bricked. So they just pass once again. Then we're going to see them go Fenrir search. Oh no, going for a copy of Rise Heart. Desires banish 10. It's going to also be good. We draw into a copy of Droll and Planet. We see Rise being normaled, activating the effect, banishing for cost, and they look at their banish pile once again, and banishing a copy of Birth here. Yeah, this is not looking too good here for the player on the right. They were cooking so good in game one, and then game two, they just did not have enough. And then it looks like in game three, it's going to be quite hard. They're going to go poke, poke here. You know, you can't afford to go for those these slow games. You know, sometimes that you don't have to really make these big, powerful boards. A Fenrir can sometimes just be enough. We're going to go into a copy of Shang here. Shang's going to start getting us that amazing rotation from our monsters. Um, alongside, I think we had a pressure planet in the hand as well. They're just shooting not to activate, which is kind of interesting to me but then we're gonna go shang shang's gonna be something with a copy of fenrir and we finally do have our fenrir of our own here summoning that out and 
We have a bell. Perhaps we're going to see a bell normal summon go into a copy of the Baron. We are going to be seeing the bell normal. Okay. Then we're going to go into a copy of Baron. I think we have birth in hand, which is why we are doing this. Birth. We're going to go Baron effect to destroy the Fenrir. We do have the Imperm. We're going to be bearing the dating this. Wow. We do have the birth. Okay, so birth's going to be able to bring back out the Fenrir. And, like, we have the pressured planet in the hand, so it's just, like, they're probably thinking to themselves, oh, well, why did they not do that? But it, it wouldn't really make a difference. They didn't banish anything face down yet. Then Fenrir can now search... We're searching for the rise. We have normal summoned already, therefore we cannot do that once again. But they could special summon out. We have the droll as well here. And then we're gonna activate the effect of the Fenrir banishing face down. They're gonna go battle face and attack for 54 here. And we could have gone rise heart, right? Rise heart 54. That'd be the yeah, it wouldn't have been game, but we could have brought it, them down, you know, another 15, but. Rise Heart, Summon, beat them over for 15, and then we could just banish, just, like, we're going to be using it anyways, right? So we might as well. Yeah, if we bring them down, we're at 54, we attack them for another 15, that's now 69, and then we go, like, overlay for our copy of, uh, of whatever it's called, the, the burn card. They only have 11 left, so they could only burn twice. They can only activate two cards. So that's a little bit of a misplay there. Flare, yeah, Flare Metal would have been definitely the play. We're going to see them go for a Pressured Planet, which is going to let them search for a copy of Rise Heart. That's not looking good either if we're on the Rise. And we're going to be activating the effect, banishing three face down, hoping that they don't have birth. We then Normal Summon out the copy of the Rise Heart. And then we're going to go for the Theosis. Theosis on the rise. What is that? We do have the Veiler in the hand. I definitely think that we would have, like, we would have instantly won that, wouldn't we? We're going to go for a Scareclaw Cashier. That tends to mean they don't have any of the good cards left in the deck. We're going to go Battle Phase into the Scare... Well, Scare Club can go Battle Phase into the Fenrir there. And then we are going to go Rise Banish Theosis, getting hit with the Veiler. And then we are going to be Theosis and adding back the Birth. And we do have Nib in the hand, so that would have that Flare Metal would have lost to Nib. They would have activated the effect, though, which is kind of interesting. But definitely not going to be enough. We could have maybe banished some cards off the Rise Heart. That would have been pretty interesting. But we do have essentially going to be what is like, I want to say what's considered game, but Birth's going to bring back out the copy of the Fenrir here. So we are on summon number one. They have Birth, Droll, Nib, and there we go. Baron Pop. We can then normal summon with the Unicorn, and they're going to go Battle Phase. And this is just game, and we see them take the win anyways. No need for Flare Metal when your opponent opens up more hand traps than you. Uh, we saw them make them go first, and it still was... We ended up bricking, and it still was fine. Um, you know, we saw them hold off on the left side, that Pressured Planet. It wouldn't have done anything, because we did have that Veiler, or I guess the Imperm for uh, that copy of Fenrir. But, you know, having the normal summon the bell out, using it as a tuner to go into a copy of Baron is still good to this day. Regardless, hope you've been watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to see more content like this. Don't forget to stay safe. Peace.